Hey, good morning and welcome back to NKU's Drawing Database. Today we're going to look at, in our basic section, contour line. And this is a very basic line approach that can be very descriptive, that can describe the three-dimensional universe around us, all kinds of three-dimensional forms, whether they're still life forms or whether they're figurative forms or abstract or somewhere in, in between all of that, contour line and contour line concepts is a powerful, very powerful tool. So stay tuned, I'll be right back. We'll jump in, we'll have two parts of it. We'll look at contour line concepts, how to use contour line, we'll do a little still life object demo, and then in the days to follow, we'll do a full-fledged still life. All right, see ya. Hey, welcome back. So let's get started with uh, a, basics, uh, a basic understanding of concepts in contour lines. So uh, what I'm going to be drawing with for this particular part in part uh, number two is graphite. So I've got an arrangement of graphite pencils in different um, H's and HB uh, quantities. And I've got, of course, sandpaper pad and sharpener. And I've got my erasers, both the white harder eraser and the kneaded eraser. Sharpener for the mechanical pencil graphite that I like to use uh, here as well. And of course, also trusty, trusty ruler too as well. So uh, these are the materials that we're gonna work with. In part one of today's lesson, we're gonna talk about contour line its con concept, what it is, and I think also, more importantly, what contour line isn't. So you get to see a range of that, okay? And then we'll do a little still life object. We'll draw that together after we do some demonstrations of the line. And then part two, which will be a separate video, we'll slow this down even further and we'll look at composition and still life in contour line. And we'll do a long, a long, uh, long term still life together. Uh, basic uh, contour line still life. Okay, so that's what's coming up here, and let's get down into the, the deeper parts of this. All right, so let's start in on contour line and talk a little bit about what contour line is and uh, what it is not. I think that's, that's particularly important. So when working with line, Generally, there, there are several different approaches. There can be fast, it can be loose and quick. So one thing contour line isn't, is it's not gesture. This is this kind of real sketchy kind of quality that I'm doing here. This kind of thing, which can be controlled for the most part, or it can be out of control. But this is not a contour line, okay? This is a, a sketched line. So this is sketchy. Sketchy here, right? That's sketchy. Um, that's loose and that's quick and it belies a kind of, of a little bit of, of less control, even though this can still be, you know, fairly, you know, fairly loose if I'm drawing like a a really sketchy kind of cylinder that could still be kind of loose, I suppose. But there is a looseness to that. Well, that's not that's not contour line. Okay. Uh, another thing that's not contour line when you're drawing is this. This is a thick, which you you think it might be a line, but we're starting to get into more value. Okay. And so that that is a value or light and dark area of, of value and it's not uh, not contour line. I think that's important to understand too. That's a real thick uh, you know, value kind of stroked area. So these are uh, not contour lines either uh, because they don't have a slow kind of meticulous uh, description to them. So now that we know a little bit about what contour line is not, let's demonstrate, let's look at together uh, what contour line uh, is. And you want to start thinking about it in, in these terms. It is, it's slow. It is meticulous. 
and it is a great descriptor of form. Descriptor of form, and in our case, we're talking about right three dimensionality and also space or the entire composition of your drawing or the design of your drawing. So it's slow, it's meticulous, and a great descriptor, an accurate descriptor of that which you want to draw. So the slow down part, I think, is, is something that, you know, as we're starting to teach students in, in, our, in our basics, fundamental, you know, courses and classes in here and also in, in YouTube, is this is the, the kicker is to really slow slow this down so let's let's demonstrate a lot of these different uh, ideas and in concepts a little bit further in line and so I've got in front of me I'm just using a an, an HB pencil it's nothing really really special and I want to show you maybe I should pull in now just a little bit as we come in and so you can see this a little bit better, the, this idea of, of contour line. So as we're looking at this slow description, contour line, line uh, has a lot of variation, okay? And that means that it is not staying the same for too long. We can say that this particular line that I draw here has no variation. It has none. So it, it can almost be like a, a coloring book line. I'll just write here color book, color book line. Now that's fine for when you're drawing for maybe cartoons or even more, more accurately when you're drawing for a color book. That's fine. I'm not against, I'm not anti-coloring book at all. As a matter of fact, I think they're, they're great. But in our purpose, we want to describe the, the three-dimensional world in all of its, you know, kind of beauty and, and glory. So what we're looking for then is a lot more variation. So we're looking for something that has flow and movement to it. And I may curve this a little bit. Now that doesn't have a lot of variation, but then I could come back and I can start to vary my line weight from a thicker area to a thinner area, come back and give it a little bit of thickness in through here, then maybe a little bit thinner in through here, then it gets thick and enough also can get darker too as well. And so now we start to see that there's more variation in more flow, and maybe this line can even break up than that which we have here. I think that's important uh, to understand and to start to see that is that we want that variation so very much to describe our world. So as we're starting to draw contour lines, uh, of course they can move in any direction, and they can flow and they can curve, they can be very light, they can stay very light completely. They don't have to change down here. They can be relatively thick throughout and then break up a little bit, taper off. So the tapering of that, I think, is a very important idea as well. Line weight can taper, line weight can vary, line can be used as a in a lighter area as we describe the lighter side of objects. And of course I'm talking abstractly, so keep that in mind. This is a very light line. It's, it can stay light through that might describe the most lightest objects that you draw. But your line work and your line weight is not going to stay the same for very long. It's going to fluctuate. 
or it's going to change. And you have to be sensitive to that, back to that change. And so where we're drawing a, a spherical object, and you can do a quick sketch of it, like so, here. So that's a quick sketch. But if I want to describe, start to describe this form in contour line only, I might start down here where it touches the base of what it's sitting on. Maybe it's going to be sitting here and then start to describe it in contour line terms. But I can't draw it all the same value of my line. And I don't want to get out of drawing it too thick into darker areas. So I'm describing the world alone with line. Well, maybe I'm not alone. I've got people around me, right? But I, what, I, what I mean is the only tool that we're going to be using is our line. And so as I come through this drawing of this sphere, my little sketch here, I might start to vary this line. If the light is coming in this direction, and it's pretty light, that means that the highlight might be here, it might be a couple of broken highlight lines, and as we move across the form and down, just the, even the outside of the form, this might get a little bit darker, then break up a little bit in, through here and change, and as we come around, we could start to vary this line a little bit further. Maybe this stays pretty light, stays very thin, so thinner, lighter lines show us light in lighter weight. In thicker lines, darker, thicker lines show us gravity and volume and three-dimensionality in our, our drawing practice. Now, let's say if I put the table behind here, I can start to vary my line. And notice how I can go back over my line. You know, another thing I think about contour line that students will do is they'll, they'll tend to draw in these, these kind of choppy ways. So let me, let me show you something about choppiness. Is that if, you, if you're drawing contour line and you're kind of doing this, I've seen this a lot, even if it's a light. If it's like that, you're coming across a form like so. And I know this is pretty abstract and basic, but we are basics. This is a basics lesson. Is we want to get out of that. You can you can vary a line. Come back down here and let me show you here. You can vary a line like that. So if I start out with a line that's really pretty light, right? and I want to go over it, that's a great thing. We just want our lines to flow. So I can make this line that's moving in through here, it's kind of one medium width line. It's got a little bit of, of not quite too dark, but I could come across here and say, okay, I can make this part darker and I can taper. So I can work back in this line, taper this line and make it darker and thicker in through here. Probably don't want to get any thicker than that. That's just probably about as thick as you'd want to go. And I could taper off here, get lighter, and maybe let the light, the line disappear a little bit, and then pick it, pick it up again. But I'm not getting into this, this kind of, this choppy, nervous kind of choppiness that kind of looks sketchy. So you've got to draw really slow. That's why it's a very slow lesson about perception, about really slowing down and looking at the, the forms and really going also, this is, this is exciting for a lot of students, I think, in the beginning, is going for lots of detail and we'll get there you know, soon enough. So I can taper this. So this line can go thick, a little bit thinner, then it can go kind of thick again, and then go, it goes tapered, and then it might go really light and kind of fade off a little bit. You can fade it like that if you want. Or you can also take your eraser. I'm going to take my needed eraser here, and I, I'm going to pull a little bit off here. And let's say, for instance, I want this line work to fade even, even further. Well, I can take my eraser 
and I can dab at that, or I can make it even disappear. I could take a line, line weight off. Now, I usually needed a eraser. Let's say if I wanted to make this contour line a little bit lighter, well, I could take my kneaded eraser and I could dab that and take quite a bit of it off. I don't want to, I don't want to drag too much of it, of, of, it, of it around because it can take it, it can smear it. But see how I can eliminate that? And when I start to break up that line, do you see how that starts to lighten, lighten up and through here? So I can show the actual, the, the illusion of light uh, in my drawing. So let me demonstrate this a little further. We go back to our ball here. So we know our light source is coming this direction. So our shadow, uh, cast shadow of our object, remember we can't use value, might fall here. So I can quick sketch this out to give it a little bit of, of form. Quick sketching is fine, and we'll talk about that when we get into drawing our still life object here in a little bit. It gives you some structure to go for. You could do a direct contour line where you don't have any uh, guiding structural component. It's a little bit harder, but it, you can certainly do that. You have to hold some forms in your mind a little bit longer. But hopefully you can see where this it's already weighted down on the table. And as I start to draw the cast shadow where it touches the ball, that's a lot of weight or heavier than up here. So I'm going to make that a darker line. And then as I pull out and away from the contour line, I'm going to go and make this line a little bit lighter, a little bit thinner. I might break it up right in through here and then recapture it back here a little bit. But I'm trying to keep it in flux to fluctuate. And I think flux fluctuates with a C and a T, but I, I, like, my, my <laughs> I like my spelling better in flux. So we're going to call it fluctuate based on, based on flux. Don't, don't, don't let me do any math for you either. That would be funny. But I think you get the idea. So we're changing. We're being sensitive to constant changes and movements within the, the usage of, of contoured line. We're not staying the same like over here. Um, that will flatten things out. So if I take a ball here and I draw it like this, right, that looks like a, a circle. And so what I want to see from my students and from you guys is three-dimensionality. So if I put this table, maybe the table's at an angle, we pick it back up over here, we can start to see three-dimensionality. So let's put a form shadow on there. And remember, when we're working, we're working with cast shadows and we're working with form shadows, we have a cast shadow here. I can't put any value in through here. I might put a little extra curve to show that maybe there's an extra light source or a little fluctuation of light. Um, but we can't illustrate using value. It's all just contour line, which makes it very, very difficult, but very descriptive and, and I think quite uh, challenging of a problem. So we'll put our form shadow in through here. It would cascade down about right here. And we know it's dark, but we know this transition is soft, so I don't want to go too dark with my line. I'm going to vary my line a little bit, maybe connect it over through here. See how I kind of shuttle back and forth like so to make that a little bit lighter here and then darker here and fade this off. Okay, that's, that's important. So that tapering or fading off is very important with your line. Line can be very manipulated. That means um, you can, again, draw a line, change it, alter it. I'm going to bring the form shadow up a little bit further here. Connect that through, taper it off, let it in, and then bring this over just a little bit down. And now we've got a ball with a form shadow and a cast shadow. Maybe I'll put a little bit of movement here, maybe a little bit in through there and I can fade this off a little bit. Now, if I don't like this little curve or turn, I can take my kneaded eraser and I can dab it. Maybe that needs to fade out a little bit more. So I could even fade it further with my 
eraser my dabbing and you can take that and move that even more and come back and say okay I want to darken this in just a touch but let that fade like I had it before and all of a sudden you've got you know a really nice fluctuation of, of line. I could come back on this side maybe strengthen this up just a little bit this could get darker as it fades away from the light here and maybe comes back together. This line I could keep a little bit broken because light's coming in through. And I kind of like this, this slightly broken because it might show reflected light coming back up. Now, and we're drawing a simple kind of white ball here on a table, maybe a ping pong ball or table tennis ball, whatever, you, however you want to say it. So the this idea now that we have our contour uh, lining through for a highlight, even highlights, which if this is a glistening kind of surface, can be outlined or contoured in. And when I say outline, again, we're not talking about everything all the same. We're talking about variation. So I might say, well, this kind of highlight might move in this direction and have a little bit of purpose more than just one kind of oval outline. I might put a couple of ticks here, just kind of a textural kind of component to show to show that off. So in this simple little ball diagram, again we're not using any value, we've got two dark thick lines coming together to really squeeze and show us that weight there. And then we've got lighter lines as we come up and around with a light is to give more description in terms of the lighter qualities of the object. As we turn around the form, I could come here and I might bring a couple of, of slight, just very light, maybe contour lines that says, okay, this ball is turning a little bit in that direction. Or maybe it's turning back here. I could break up this and say it's turning away. So not only are we saying description, but what are we saying also? We're saying cross contour with our line. So contour can be descriptive and sensitive, but also can be contouring around. If I do it too much, then I'm, it's going to be like there's a decal or a sticker on, on, our, on our ball, which right now I don't want. We'll get into detail a little bit, a little bit later. So darker in the bottom where the, where the gravity is, where it's holding together, and lighter on top where the line is, okay? Um, and then lots of variation and change over through here. All right, let's go on to, we'll look over here. I've got a little bit of uh, paper space left to, to work with here. Let's get um, even more uh, um, descriptive with uh, some of the things that um, we're doing here. So again, the pencils I have are, are a range of things. I've got an H, an HB, I've got a 2B. Remember, 2B is a little bit darker. Then I've got a 6B over here, a 4B in my mechanical pencil. I can change between a 2H and a 2B. Okay, well, why have all that? Well, it's nice if you're heavier handed. If you're heavy handed and you make a really dark line um, too often or too quick, like I've got a 6B. I was heavy-handed when I was a young kid, a student, and everything tended to be really, really too dark. So if I was making everything kind of in this dark range, like through here, and I had trouble lightening up, I might tell my students, go to a 2B or even go to an HB. For me, the Goldilocks range of drawing and contour line it's generally been about a 2B or an HB since I'm a little bit heavier handed at times. But it depends on the person. And I've seen students who who draw, let's say, the contrast between here. I've got an H pencil and who are drawing contour lines. And I'm not even sure you can see it. Hopefully, maybe you, you can't so much. And that's the point. The point is, is that there's not enough variation in either one of these to really do work for you. Here it's, it's overburdened, and here it's underburdened. You can't even see it. And some students can't even get darker, even when they have some variety in their line, they can't even get darker than that 
and that's not going to do it for you because you need a full range of, of uh, value in thicknesses and movements in your contour line to really do you to do you good. I think that's important uh, to note. And you can use you can switch out with pencils. I've got this is the lightest here that I'm that I've got in my that in my demo here is an H and this is a 6B. Okay, so that's heavy dark and that is uh, the lightest the H in through here. And so let's let's talk about more variety in man, in manipulation of that too as well. So if we're doing some more line line weighting through here is I might start out and you could start out with a lighter line. But remember that eraser is your best friend. So we're maybe starting out something that's moving in this direction and then maybe it moves back here and over and maybe down down and through here. It kind of goes out the screen so maybe I'll keep it about keep it about right in through here. Well that's pretty good. So and then we can say okay well we we want line variation and we're talking about variation in thickness here. So even though it's thick, it doesn't have to be dark. I mean, that's thick and dark. This is thick and medium, correct? So it doesn't have to be. It's when you need it to be, when you need to show weight or darkness or heaviness that you might want to use that. So I could taper that down through. Maybe it's going to get darker in through here and thicker again. It's going to lighten up. Maybe just get a little bit darker in through here. Well, okay. So we've got some variety uh, with our line, I might take it in this direction, turn it around a little bit. And since these are just abstract concepts and, st and studies, but I think very important important ones, is we can come down a little bit, move through here, come back up, break up that line. But we're missing, what are we missing? We're missing more variety with our, our line weight. So I can come back and take uh, a 6B pencil, and work into that and remember not be choppy but to, to do what to come back in and to give some variety taper that let that lighten up a bit and see how I start to get in one linear structure this whole thing is one line but it took a lot more linear effort to make it or you could draw I mean contour line can be a little faster but again, it's a little hard, hard to con control. And I think a lot of times when we're drawing with the figure, we, I draw the palm method, which is a contour line, which can go from thick to thin pretty quickly. When you draw with the pen holding technique, that's a little, it's harder to get variety in the beginning, but it can be very controlled. So the point here is to taper, to give variety. I can go thicker and darker, then it goes light. Then it might go to medium line in through here. And I'd say something too, I probably am already needing to sharpen my pencil. So the softer the pencil that you have, the more you'll lose that lead tip pretty quickly. You probably already know that. But you know, get in there and keep those pencils really sharp. So I'll take a moment and I'll sharpen here just to keep that tip a little, give more variety here, lighten off give a little bit more expression here, but not as dark or thick as that. And see how this fades away a little bit. This comes more forward too as well. And that's something I'll talk about. I can lighten this up here, fade that out. This can go a little bit darker as well. So there's a lot of variety that you can give your, your line work. So I can pick this up, maybe make this just a little bit thicker as this turns, maybe that gets darker. And through here, and then it starts to maybe lighten up and keeping it thinner and liner as well, I think helps. So this whole idea about line and value, I think is an important too as well. And okay, what does that mean when we're talking about value and line? Because you're, you're telling me that I can't use value. Um, what I mean by that is you can't use shading. 
and you can't use edge control and, and the, the illusion of line. But line can has value. We're already seeing it here. Darker, thicker, that's darker. This, this is lighter. And then when you erase, like I might break up this little line here, fade it out, it's completely faded away to the tone of the paper, right? And so what happens there, that becomes the value of the paper. So absolute light and then just about absolute dark. Well, in terms of uh, space, what can happen is a darker, thicker line will make, we'll make a, a contour line that's got some variety to it. I'll just kind of make it straight in through here. Let me bring it up a little bit. So it's a little bit thinner here, then it gets darker, then it gets really dark, maybe here at the bottom. Okay, like really dark, but that's about as thick as you want for a contour line, and then I'll let it fade a little bit. Then I'll do the same thing to the right side, about the same width, but I'm going to show you what happens when I keep the line a little lighter in terms of pressure and value. Okay, maybe not quite as thick. I could keep it about the same thickness, but I'll, I'll thicken this up just to show you that. But I'll keep them the same length, and there's a reason for that. Here and here, and then I'll put the ne another one next to it here. And do you see what's happening? Is that not only are they fading in terms of light, but the illusion of distance is starting to happen as well. So darker, thicker lines come to us, they come more forward. That's important to know because when you're drawing detail, and when you're drawing more descriptive objects that you want to come forward, you're going to put together more darker, thicker lines. You get them together and you get a lot of attention. This will draw a lot of attention. Where you have lighter lines, thinner lines, these are medium weight, medium valued kind of lines you get less attention. And then if you start to take this line work in line weight here and even break it up further, they can fall away and fall apart. Hopefully you can you might not even be able to see these. These will start to go back into space, way back into space, and push the spatial dimension of your drawing even further. So we can push forward and we can pull our space back even further. And what you're going to find out too is, is that if I start to draw even more lines over here and they don't have to be as dark, but they could be just a more, more collection of, of contour lines through here. what happens is, is our eye pulls here, these all fade to the background. So the foreground of your objects, your still lives that you draw, will also have more detail, more detail to them. Lots more detail in the front and then less detail to none to a fade in the background. All right, so these are abstract concepts I know I'm talking about. But as we start to draw objects, they will all play a dominant role. So I think it's good to separate them from the, the difficulty of trying to, make, to trying to put this all together in the beginning and talk a little bit about, about that practice. So what I would say to you, if you're pretty new at drawing, um, is to take sheets of paper and just practice line weight. Slow down. Practice line sensitivity and try to draw lines that are light and thin, and light and medium. Okay, so I've got an H pencil here, which is pretty, pretty hard.
Okay, fades out. Maybe, you know, draw them in different directions. And they can come over together. They can cross over if you wanted. They can be squiggly. And sometimes you may draw them a little bit faster too as well. But these are pretty light. These are really, you probably can't even hardly see that at all. And that's okay. Don't worry about drawing objects. We're going to do one together in a moment and start to put this together. But take sheets of paper and draw and start to taper a little bit. And remember this whole idea of, let's see, hand pressure. Hand pressure. So the more that you push down, the darker something gets, okay? So I'm pushing down over here pretty heavy right now, and that's pretty dark. And I've got a dark, darker, softer pencil to begin with, so that's pretty dark. Now I'm going to push down with my H pencil. I'm going to put my hand underneath here to, so I won't smudge that. I'll take my H pencil and I'll push down pretty hard too. I'm pushing down just as hard as I did with the 6B. Here's the 6B and this is the H. And look, I can't get, I'm, I'm putting a dent in my paper. I'm drawing so hard and I can't get, my knuckles are getting, getting red and sore. I can't. That's about as dark as I could get. So this idea of hand pressure. Now I'm lightening up my touch with the 6B and just kind of slowly going in there and tapering through. And, and I'll lay off the light touch and I can take a, even a soft pencil like a 6B and I can really taper and fade that away. Hand pressure is so important. You're always going to be fluctuating, right, with my new spelled word, in flux with not only your line but also your hand. Your hand should be changing uh, pressure constantly. It should be moving and flowing and changing all the time. And the reason why is you'll be sensitive to three-dimensionality and light because light's always in flux and it's always changing and so we want that with our line. Until you don't. You can always break the rules but when you, when you do break the rules and the line weight becomes flat or the same, like a, like a coloring book, you get a flatter experience. Now some artists want that and that's totally cool. I totally support that. Just for this particular lesson, we're, we're trying to keep it observational and, and, and perceptual. Now if I take this thicker line, I could take my lighter pencil and say if I want to keep it light over here, I can start to come back, curve it back around, lighten this up, even though I might be pushing down as much pressure as here. So you're going to have to find your, your, your physical range. Drawing can be, can be physical to get your line weight to do, to do what you want as well. I think that's, that's important. Okay. All right, so that was a lot there. It's kind of a hodgepodge of different concepts, but I think it's important for you to at least be aware of them and be aware of what the concept is. So be aware of these drawing attributes as you're, as you're sketching or you're doing contour line. And again, let's refresh here. Know what contour line isn't. It's not big value. It's not a sketchy gesture line. It's not loose. It's not quick. And it's not choppy. And it's not all the same uh, tonality. That's not that's one, maybe one section of a good contour line, but if that's all it, all it is, it doesn't really describe a lot three-dimensionality in terms of three-dimensionality. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to jump to a still life object, and let's draw that together. Let's spend a little time looking at putting these concepts now into good, accurate, practical use. All right, so let's look at this still life object. So we've got uh, one pair now sitting down on a, a table. 
here. And uh, when starting out with Contour Line, the way I approach this with uh, teaching it is not a direct contour line approach, but a approach with contour line on top of what I call the quick sketch. And I like the idea of quick sketch because it gives students confidence in that they have a little bit of structure to work with underneath, meaning that uh, we can sketch out the object first get it, get a feel for it and then move on to contour align. So what I would say about switch quick sketch really quickly is keep it light. Keep it very light. Keep it very loose. Light and loose. Okay, it's kind of just the opposite of of contour align. It's like he's doing a contour align uh, demo and he's talking about keeping it light, keeping it loose. Well, this is the undergirding and let me show you why. So we'll do, I'll do a couple of lands of pairs. And this really, what I'm really saying about all this is that the whole thing is, is a lay-in, is stru a structural lay-in to give you it, the ability to have the form visualized and then you can put your contour line description on top of that. So if I did a couple of, of, of ones in through here, so the lay-in or the quick sketch is very light, very loose. So I don't want to make this very, very dark at all. As a matter of fact, the lighter the better. We want our contour line to come out and shine for us, whether or not you're working in graphite or you're working in charcoal or you're working in pen and ink or it could be oil, or acrylic or pastel or what colored pencil or whatnot. And so the quick sketch needs to be quick. That's why I name it quick sketch. And you want it to be loose and you want it to be fresh and and free. So we've got, and I'll put a little table behind here, and you could probably barely see that. And that's a good thing. So it's really this is pair is really kind of based off the what? The sphere, right? And so you have that here. I might just lay in a little bit of, of where I think the shadow is gonna fall. And of course it sits down on a table and so we have that shadow here, right? So we have a shadow in through there. And so already I've got a quick sketch and I'm ready, to, kind of really ready to go with my contour line. So if I was doing some more, let me do some more quick sketches. I'll just do some more pairs in different, different placements in different directions. And so I've got a pair here. Maybe it's kind of the opposite of that. And so I can turn it in through here. It opens up a little bit here. Here comes the stem where it connected to the pear tree in through here. It has a little body there and maybe the table is back in through here. And then you're really ready to go with your contour line on top of that. And so now you have a really good feel for where that contour line is going to be beholden. So you'll see me switch back and forth quite a bit as to where you know I, I hold my pencil. So I'll hold the pencil in the pen method and you'll see me hold the pencil uh, in the palm palm method, palm method here, and then pencil method uh, here as well. And so again, let me do a couple more quick sketches, sketches, and then we'll switch and we'll go on to a little bit of more formal study. So maybe I was doing an apple over and through here. So let's do a couple objects. Let's do an apple and then we'll do a can like a soup can next to it. Let's say the apple, so the apple is a sphere, right? And so I could quick sketch that out pretty nicely and then give us a little bit of the divot of the apple. And then here where it's, it starts to maybe sit on the ground. So you, but you have to decide which kind of apple you like. Is it a Granny Smith or is it a, a golden, delicious, or red? I'm, I'm more of a Granny Smith kind of person, so. Uh, that's kind of a joke, but you get the idea. I'm just drawing fictitious apples. Notice that I'm not getting dark, but if I did, if I got really dark, all of a sudden, uh-oh, that's way too dark for my sketch. Here, what do I do? Well, you have some options. Um, don't take your big white eraser yet, okay? Take your kneaded eraser and use it like a stamp. Well, let's, okay, what does that mean? Well, what you can do is you can take this needed eraser and stamp it out. Tap on it and let take off some of that graphite first and then you can come back and kind of drag it 
a little bit and look how I can make that very, very light line. And so I still have a nice quick sketch. You don't want to get any darker than this with your, with your quick sketch. But if you have a darker hand, you can always use your racing tool to help yourself kind of self-correct. But ultimately, you want to develop the touch that you can go dark and you can go light. You want to be versatile. I tell my students you want to be a ballerina and you want to be a bulldog or a, or a bull or a construction worker, I think I used to say. All in one drawing. So you want to be a ballerina and a construction worker. I guess construction workers are rough. I used to be a construction worker. All right, so I'll put a little leaf or two uh, on the apple here. And so we've got that. And then maybe this, this kind of bulges in like so. You don't want to fuss too much over your quick, quick sketch. All the detail, all the description, all the beauty of the drawing comes from the contour line, not from the quick sketch. The quick sketch is the lay-in and it's the basics of what you're going to do. All the beauty will come from the contour line. So if I put a soup can next to it, maybe we can overlap it and our viewpoint is slightly from above. And so I'll put a little cylinder here. It was sitting down. That'd be an awfully big apple. It's okay. Well, for uh, demonstration purposes here. All right, so we're here. Stay in the page here. All right, there we go. So I can lay down a quick sketch. Okay. Nothing special, but it just gives me the general idea. Notice how I draw through the object and through the image. Maybe I put a little, maybe there was a ping pong ball or a golf ball behind behind the apple. So we have three different kind of options. I'll put a little cast shadow. We don't want to forget about our cast shadows of our objects and maybe the table is somewhere over here. So I've got a little composition going, right? And you don't want to get too detailed, but say for instance if you had in your quick sketch you had a little label on in here and you put your label across. Okay. It had Campbell's soup. I'm just going to draw a letter. You can keep this light. You can kind of sketch out the, the, the type of lettering that goes on, but you don't want to get, you want, don't want to get too involved with it. Let the, let the contour line do the work for you. So the quick sketch is your lay-in. It's your guide. It's your structure. Okay? And it gives you the, the, the area of placement. It's also, it helps for composition too as well. So it gives you those, those placements. Okay, let's go on now to the full-on pair and we'll slow this down and we'll do about a 20 or 30 minute study and see how far we can get before we go on to our final long-term still life. All right, so let's get started on this pair. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to lay this in with a quick sketch. And uh, we're just doing a little bit of study of this pair here. And we'll, I'll go for about 30 minutes or so and see how far I can get. And then uh, we'll jump into a new video and then we'll do uh, a long, really long still life. So I won't do this too long. I don't want to put you in a coma. So again, the quick sketch. Notice that I'm looking at this form and I'm looking at it as kind of an oblong space. It's tilted in this direction. You see that? And I'm just getting a ginger feel, just a sense gingerly, uh, very sensitively of where the forms fall in through here. It's really kind of rounded, but we want to get that 3D quality right in our drawing. And so I'll be pushing down in through here and then over and then getting the end of this hub of this pair uh, in through here. So we've got that kind of tilted down. It almost kind of looks like a bear's head if you, if you think about it. It's kind of weird and strange that way. And then I've got this little divot of the pair. It's, it's kind of an eye. And then I'll, I'll kind of throw in where the stem of the pier is kind of in through. It gets a little bit hidden by that, uh, that cloth, but that's, that's okay. And then a little bit of the table in the back will kind of come through here and then on through up and over kind of the back and through there. And that's really enough for a quick sketch for what you really need uh, to kind of get started. So let's jump in there and then start to work with 
uh, some contour lines. So I'm using my 2H and, and HB and my uh, 2B pencil here for effect. And um, let's jump in there and just uh, see what uh, see what we've got in through here. So, you know, looking at this sketch, and I think I also before I, we get started, get further, I want to lay in my <clears throat> shadow pattern, that cast shadow. We want to make sure that that's that's on there too as well. And so I'll just jump right in to the contour line, and I'll start to think about its linear expression here and I can work outside and jump into inside anytime that I want and that I see fit to. So contour line as you're working it is not a an outline only. It can be but it is not an exclusive outline only. And you know, what I mean by that is you could jump in and work on the inside of this at any point in time. Where you start is where you start. I could have started here if I wanted to. I could have started uh, over here if I wanted to. Kind of this curve of the, the cylindrical part of the pair and kind of come back over if I want. So I think there are many different ways to start this and they're good endings and there's there are endings that are not as good as as others and that's just part of the game of of life I suppose in drawing but I, can, I know this is going to be a darker line so now I can go back and I can give a little bit darker weighted expression to my pair. I generally start somewhere probably that is a dominant kind of shape or movement and in this case the movement of the pair moves around in through here and of course we've got that nice cast shadow on it so I'm also going to go ahead and start it as it pulls in right through here and if your your quick sketch is a little off or you don't like it adjust it adjust it with your liner go back and quick, quick sketch a little bit but you, you'll notice that as you draw further, your your quick sketch disappears, meaning that the the contour line and the weight of that contour line kind of take over, and we miss we don't see the quick sketch anymore. And you can erase part of it out later on if you wanted. So right in through here, but for the most part, a light quick sketch or or a gesture or a lay in, however you want to say it, really can can disappear pretty well pretty quickly. Then I'll start with a little bit of this contour line of this cast shadow and where it really comes into through through here and it starts to play out over. So a lot of times I'll go with a lighter line even though I know I'm going to make it dark and I'll, I'll feel the the flow of it in through here. And up and then through. And I'm using just white sketch paper, white drawing paper. It's got a little tooth to it, which is nice, meaning that it's cold pressed. So this cast shadow is fairly dark. And so the line will be darker, but I'm gonna get I'm gonna vary it. I always want to be in flux. That's my new word, my fluctuation, F-L-U-X, right? And so I'm going to vary it a little bit. With this curve, so I may make it a little bit darker. I may come through, and as it goes up, it will fly, this cast shadow will fly up and over a little bit and kind of out of the screen through there. I may come back here and grab it. So see I make this a little bit thicker, then this gets a little bit thinner, then we get a little bit thicker. You might ask, Mark, how do you know to do that? Well, uh, experience and time, and I can still, I might adjust it later on, but a lot of drawing, a lot of time to, to play around with variations of line weight and depth 
in dimension. So like for instance, this cast shadow is a little bit further than this one. I'm going to fade this one off. Let it be a little bit lighter. And this one's a little bit more, since it's closer and more defined, I'm going to go a little bit darker in through here before it fades. And there's a little bit of detail. I'll catch that line in through there. Let that fade in. So it's in shadow, but I'm not going to go as dark, so it fits inside there. And don't forget your trusty, in, in my case, my trusty triangle, because I like to put it over on the top, so I don't, if I need to draw over here now, then I don't want to smudge it, so I'll put my, my triangle on top. All right, so we've got to start now. We're kind of on a roll a little bit. So one thing I see already is I can start to think, come inside a little bit and think about three dimensions. And I might see some contouring opportunity in through here that I might push around. <coughs> to give that depth and dimension a little bit. That can come around, hit this, kind of come over this overlaps here. So overlap, where things overlap, they get a little bit darker. Things behind them are a little bit lighter. This overlaps nicely. So it starts to fade in through. And I'm going to break this line up just right in through here just a little bit just to give it variety. It's a little bit mealied in through here. Kind of tips up and over. And then see where this bends, this turn is in through. That's an opportunity to get me inside the form. So I don't like to stay outside the form too long. I like to jump in on the inside even if I haven't finished it. I've already got my quick sketch to hold me in. And so I'm going to jump in through here and start working on the inside a little bit. In through here. Pick this up a little bit, this kind of oval sort of divot form. So what's going to happen at times is when you're drawing contour, you're going to want to, maybe you'll get tired or you want to going to speed up, take a break and keep it slow. The slower the better. That's why I probably, I may or may not get finished this little study and it's not important. But I, I do want, what's really important is the emphasis on slow and meticulousness. So this whole area here is in highlight. And so I'm going to emphasize that by drawing its contour around it. So it's kind of outline contour and I kind of block around it through here. And it goes up and over tapers off a little bit, breaks up a little bit. So, so a fade on a highlight, I break up with fading very light soft lines to get that fading idea. And then when see it kind of crooks in here like a little hockey stick or some kind of L shape, gets a little darker, that's a little bit more definitive. And so I can go and draw a little bit darker in through here. through and over. And this might fade a little bit up and through here. Back through. And so I've now I've got this illusion going on of a highlight. This will get a little softer and through here. My softer touch and then get a little bit darker as it starts to come around and through here. And then we've got an inside form. And so I start to look at more finite detail as shapes. I name them into this elongated, maybe kind of bug shape or 
whatever the shape is and through here. So we've got that going on. So now I've dipped in on the inside and I can say, okay, this is in shadow. So I might take some cross contouring lines and start to work my way around and use these little cross, cross, excuse me, cross contouring lines to tell a story about position and direction in through here and maybe up and down through here a little bit. <clears throat> so I can come back and maybe strengthen in this dark even a little bit further where it sits down. It feels like it's touching here right in through there so I can really pop sort of a dark thick line and let it go a little bit lighter right in through there. And so let me work on the stem a little bit. <coughs> <clears throat> it is a tube-like structure. So I'm always thinking about the dimensionality of a form. So it's cylindrical, it's moving around. So I don't, I don't really want to ever forget that. It's a little bit darker in through here. So this moves through here kind of turns and goes dark and then it gets pretty oblong and then fades over and then we lose it a little bit with the cloth but I'll just imagine that part of it turning like so so a little dot or dash kind of a short thick fat line versus a longer line, versus a broken line. So there's constantly in a state of fluctuation. Very important to, to realize that concept and get that concept um, ingrained into your, your drawing practice. I can't emphasize that enough. So what I want to do now is continue to go. We're about oh, 15, almost 15 minutes in. I don't want to put you in a drawing coma, but I do want you to continue to see how this is formulated and drawn, so bear with me. But you're here for a reason. You're here to learn, so I assume that you want to watch all the time and look at a lot of different artists. Uh, I, you know, of all the contour artists out there, uh, Angra. I-N-G-R-E-S, French neoclassical artist, one of the quintessential and foremost masters of contour draftsmanship that you'll ever see. It's an amazing contour, contour draftsman. But then I also like somebody, you take somebody like Van Gogh, who wouldn't, you wouldn't think, and he uses mostly charcoal for his contour lines, and they're a little bit faster and they're a little bit rougher, but they are spectacular. And so look up Van Gogh and look up Angre, Jean-Dominique Angre, I-N-G-R-E-S is his last name. So now we're going to find this outer, outer part of the pair. And this overlapped a little bit, so now we're going to go up. And see, I've got my quick sketch to hold me, so I know where I'm going. I know where I'm going up a little bit higher, and this is going to be nibbed a little bit more, nippled out a little bit more in conjunction to there. So I've got that <laughs> I've got that working for me and I think I'll go ahead and put in the table in through here as well. You know even if you make a ruled line you can uh, make that line varied. So keep that in mind. I'll have to show you that next time. So we've got a little variation in that table, and of course that table goes, if you keep that angle going, like about, right about there. And so I might come back and catch my table. So this line, since it's closer to us, might be a little, ultimately a little darker. And then this line over here, 
as we start to come around. Don't be afraid to move your drawing board 360 degrees to capture what you need. I'm not going to for the sake of the video, but you should feel free to move it 360 degrees to get the kind of arm movement that you truly, truly need and want. I think that's important. And so you're in control of your drawing, not the drawing in control of you. Almost always. Sometimes there's a there's a, an exception to that rule. Contemporary drawing practice. This is pretty pretty basic and pretty traditional, yet still very alive and and well. So I'm going to fade this table off, and again a lighter line, broken line. Notice that this line in front's darker on the pair. And so it pulls forward that line, and this table line is lighter. So this, I'll make this just a little bit darker, this cast shadow line. And so that will fade, fade that line out nicely. So let's find now the edges of this form, of our contour, our line. And so it, the light source is coming in my pen direction like this, and the highlight is, is right in through here, right, and then on that weird kind of eye thing as well, kind of in that, that divot that we know. But that means that this area of the pear, even though it's turning away from us here, and certainly back here, is a little bit lighter, and I'm going to show that by almost breaking up this line, keeping it really light. So I'm going to come up here, keep it light, let it almost fall apart, meaning that I'm going to let it go. So don't be afraid to let your line go and then come back, pick it up in a place here. And then reconstitute your line or reconnect with your line actually and it starts to fall back in shadow, so that line's going to be even darker. Notice how I keep going over my line. line. I'm trying to make it fluid and beautiful and varied, so a line can take a long kind of process, or it can be a little bit quicker and more direct. Usually that happens with the palm method, um, but right now with contour line, in this particular methodology, of drawing. We want a real controlled kind of line. So we're at the apex of the height of the pair. And now we want to, from its height, move downward. And right at that apex, at the nib of it, I'm going to make that a little dark area. It tells me it's turning, but it's getting into shadow. It's at the height, it's contrast, and then I'm going to move down and off of it a little bit, kind of almost straightens out. I'm going to give it a little bit of rounderness, rounder, rounderness, rounder quality to it. Okay, again, don't, don't, uh, don't let me uh, be your semantics coach or your mathematics professor. All right, so we're going to come in here, get this a little bit further, and then through here, dip on, and that dips on down. This kind of overlaps. And through here. Also, another thing to realize is you don't have to get every detail in a drawing um, to make it alive and to make it sing. I think the Impressionists proved that, and really the Renaissance artists too. It looks like there's a lot of detail, but there's not that much detail. So I've got about 10 minutes left. Let's jump into some of this. So the, the big overarching part of this image now is a round ball. Okay, and we want to make it feel like it's rounded. So these kinds of lines help with the dimensionality, these kinds of contour lines, the shadow in through here. So I see the shadow pattern. If we wanted to quick sketch that, just gingerly, very lightly, here on over, and it kind of has this shadow shape down and around and through, very lightly, right in through there. And then it cascades back on over to here. I've got, I need to emphasize that movement before really I do any anything else in the drawing. Uh, in terms of detail. Remember this, structure uh, over detail, especially in the beginning. You can break those rules later on, and you can break them with a lot of power, but for now, the structural formation of the form over, over detail. So I think that's, that's important. So let's, let's test out that theory 
and let's start to, I'm going to come work up here a little bit and start to throw in some very soft uh, cross contour lines to show off the form in through here as it moves through. Then this gets a little darker, so my line work will get a little bit darker in through. I'll bring it down and I'll catch this line. Remember variation. So you've got a darker shadow, but it's soft, right? Remember, we can't describe this drawing with any value. <coughs> Although I'm going to show you one little trick right at the end I like to do with my students. And so this is a soft change. This is soft and through here, not too hard edge. And so they're broken lines and they're lighter lines to express a kind of softness in through here. Then they start to move over and down through in this direction. And then through down here. A little bit darker. So you don't have to you don't have to make a dark, dark line to tell us that this is in shadow. What this is telling us is that that is the light source is coming from the top left and of course this big cast shadow helps a lot too but this is softer and this is a harder edge and we're trying to explore that three dimensionality in a range of contour line which is not the easiest thing on earth to do all right it's hard stuff everything in art is hard but it it's it's worth it it's, it's worth it. So I'm going to get into this divot, simplify that, and then we're going to start to, to, to come down the shadow here. And I'm going to start to contour my line through here to emphasize the dimensionality of the shadow very very light in through here <laughs> and now I'm going to put some cross contour lines meaning that I'm working if you see my fingers my hands I'm doing this just in the air that's what I'm thinking before I'm even drawing sometimes I'll, you can I can feel it in my mind or, or understand it in my mind rather while I'm drawing before I even make the mark through here and coming down. I don't do too much because it, that starts to get a little stylized, but I do like to emphasize that, that cross contouring around. Then I'm going to give a secondary line or two up and through here, which tells me there's a little more reflected light in this section. And I'm going to come up in through here. break through, break it off a little bit, and come on down here and kind of glide down into about right there. That's where I'm headed. But I don't want to go fast. I'm going to go take it slow. Take it easy. Take it slow. <clears throat> Emphasize Structure over detail always. Structure over detail. And you're always in a state of flux too as well. Pull this in just a little bit and make this line a little bit darker and through there. We've got a pretty workable uh, contour pair going now. Now I want to get into um, these lighter areas. So I want to hit the highlight in through here. And so I'm going to make these lines earlier that I made a little bit darker. So don't be afraid to go back and adjust here to make this pop out. So we're drawing, what's funny is this highlight here, we're drawing a highlight, right? Actually I'm drawing what's next to the highlight and I've got to draw a little bit darker to make, the, make it seem like it's this weird kind of, kind of strange highlight. So now I've got left this divot in the pair. And so here was the quick sketch that I made. I can kind of 
go back and reconnect, and it's basically a crater. So the light source is coming from the left, and it's hitting the back right side of the divot that makes that line. Um, and then the left side here is in shadow. Just drawing here, thinking about this shadow shape. And I don't draw every detail I see. I simplify some areas for the sake of the, the drawing. So this almost closes in. This gets a little darker in through here. There's a little bit of extra detail in through here. I might go back in on the inside. Notice that nothing is no line stays the same, again, for too long. It's not a coloring book outline. Rather, it is a, an expression of the form through uh, uh, linear control, if you will. All right, let's come around this other end here. And around. End off coming to that divot, so we want to give it, it's kind of got a lip to it, right? Right in through here. I've got about five, five more minutes I want to work for you. Hang in there, because I want to show you something. And through here, and through, and then we've got this little part here I'll get. The strange kind of divot that happened. And I actually think this is an artificial pair. This is a still life setup that I've got for my classes once they come back from summer recess, ready to go. And it's fun. It's this is a strange. It's a plastic one. Strange. Huh, it's got a divot. What little imperfections? Okay. Lastly, this highlight uh, on next to it so right in through here so let's go over that and so it's kind of a blob you know name it say what is that well it's kind of just a blob it's kind of faded in through here and it's soft through there and it goes round through here just following its outside contour around and I come back on the inside so I'm just kind of trapping the light, the dark, around it with the line. And back and through a little bit and it comes back around. Like so, mostly. And I'll put a couple of contour lines here. We'll go a little darker. Just to give it the rounded quality there. So we're pretty much Kind of a basic set, and I could spend a lot more time on this, even make it hyper more hyper detailed, but I don't want to. The last thing, because the, the important thing is I want to show you is the structural part, but the last thing I do want to show you is this idea of focal point. So we've got a pretty good idea of things going on. The focal point already is right in through here, okay? Because of the amount of line, line work that is uh, connected together that's in the area there's so much activity and there's less of it uh, through here and so what I like to teach my students is give uh, just a little bit of the area uh, in terms of now a little value or a little focal point so what I want to do is do about uh, just a touch of shading okay not a whole lot but just a little bit and give it a sense or a quality of uh, three-dimensionality, but only in one little area. 
So we're saying that, I'm going to say that this is the focal point. And so I'm going to try to make that one little area right around this highlight work with my drawing. And I'm going to make it value-wise as nice as I can make it. So I'm going to go down, now I'm turning my hand to the palm method. And I'm going to make this area around the highlight a little bit darker. And I can pop out that dark, or the highlight a little bit further in through there. So just this one little area of a focal point. Not a whole lot, but just a little bit. So we're going to use, I lied to you, we're going to use a little bit of value, but not a ton. Just to give it a little expression, a little kick, and make it seeing even more. Actually make the line work even that more, even that more distinctive. And I'm going to make your eye flow through here, through right and through there. Then you can pick up the line and go around the, the, the uh, pair at a contour line here. Through there. So just a couple of more minutes here. So I don't want to do all this section, so it's a little bit darker in through here, but I've got to be careful. So now I'm going to fade it and let it fade out a little bit here. And I'll push this back in a little bit darker in through here. Right in through there. Oops, look like I got an email. You heard that. So we're in the offices at the university, which is where I film. And you might hear colleagues walking by, or you might hear technology, whatever. I ain't going to edit it out. I'm going to keep it. And there's a lot of energy here, so let's keep it energetic. All right, so a couple of more seconds here. Let's get a little bit more. Now, you can, again, you could spend hours here, but this is, again, a contour line. So you want to keep it mostly line. I could still spend a lot more time with, with line. But, okay, five, four, three, two, one. Let's, let's get out of that rendering. That's enough for a focal point. So with that, I draw your eye right to there. I want you to see this first when you read this image. And then you can start to work your way around the object. Now I see little other divots and craters we could go back and put over time, but the main thing is now is the expression of the process of contour line. Okay? And so again we started with an idea, we started with our quick sketch which gave us our structure and our foundation and then we used a variety of line weights and thicknesses and thinnesses and long lines and short lines and broken lines to tell a story about three-dimensionality. And I think that that's so important because when you put it all together, when you have value and line and perspective, you can tell a dramatic uh, kind of story. Okay, great. So I hope you got something out of this. So the next time that this lesson comes up, we're going to do a full-on still life with multiple objects and composition. And I'm going to take you from start to finish so you see that process all the way through. Okay? All right, take care until next time. Bye-bye.